We're down at Supernova Pop Culture Expo in Perth and we're chatting to Mr. James Bond himself, George Lazenby. How are you going? Yeah, it's too bad that name's bigger than mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule signing to have a chat with us. Uh, how's your experience been so far with the, the Supernova Expo? Not bad. It's some of the guys out there are doing a lot better than I am. I don't know why. It hurts my ego. Hurts your ego? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, so we'll just have a quick chat about Bond because I, I read a really fascinating story of why you didn't continue doing the Bond films. Mm -hmm. Makes me look you, silly, doesn't it? Not really because you, got, yeah. you had people around you so it, it's, you've got to listen to your people and obviously it didn't work out the way that you probably wanted. But mm -hmm. if you would just quickly tell us the, the short version of what happened in those events, that would be uh, great. Well, <coughs> I... Uh I didn't know much about the industry, being the first film I'd ever done. And I was um, talked into giving it up by a guy called Ronan O'Reilly. He, he uh, created Radio Caroline, which was the station that launched all the English pop groups. Yeah. So I thought he knew what he was talking about. And he said, James Bond's over. It's Sean Connery's gig. Let's make love, not war. Um, you know, you're better off getting out now because it's going to crash. And I said, but they're offered me a million dollars under the table to do another one, which was like 20 million today. Yeah, yeah. He said, don't worry about the money. There's a guy in uh, Italy called Clint Eastwood. He's making 500 grand a movie. And it, he doesn't even talk. <laughs> <laughs> Just sits there and makes, uh, walks around. You can go and do a couple of those and get a million dollars. So I listened to him. But then I found after Bond, uh, the Bond people put out that I was difficult to handle. Yeah. And it wasn't on the set. I was difficult to get to sign something. Okay, yeah, yeah. I never, ever signed their contract to this day. And um, I walked away. And then they tried to get me back after Connery did one more. They came to me again, and I still said no. Well, it's all history now, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And you've, you've still got a great body of work. You've done, well, over 50, 60 titles. Yeah. Well, numerous... there's nothing great about them because I never worked mainstream. Yeah. I couldn't get a job mainstream because, uh, you know, there's a, what was it called, the equalizer. Yeah. That was my idea. I gave it to Mike Sloan. We set it up. I was wardrobed. I was ready to go. And they didn't pick me up. And I called Mike. I said, what happened? Uh, we got a call from upstairs. <laughs> da, da, da. So I couldn't get into the mainstream yeah. movies again. But you did, you've done some voice acting as well. So you, yeah. you've done a, a few, few animated series. So what's it like? It, but, well doing animated compared to being on screen yourself? Well, it's hard to get those jobs. They're easy and I like them, but uh, it's different. Yeah, you get with a, bo a bunch of guys all in a row and you're all doing your thing and it's fun. It's fun? Like, yeah. Now you don't live in Australia, you're based in LA, yeah? Yeah, that's right, I've got three kids there. And do you Little do, ones. Do you, oh, do you come home often? Oh uh, yeah, I was here last Christmas showing them where I came from. <laughs> it was quite funny, the house was about a quarter as big as I thought it was when I went to Goulburn. I said, this is where I was born. <laughs> I go, God, it's a little shack. And when you're a little kid, you think it's a mansion. Yeah, and uh, you and Richard, uh, Richard Keel are doing a lot of press together. Um, what's it like hanging out with him? Because we interviewed him yesterday, and he's a really nice guy. And he is. He's a sweet guy. You know, and uh, if I was that big, I wouldn't be that hand nice. bigger than my <laughs> yeah. hand. Uh, and out of your... Film, well, your film and TV history, what's the favourite thing that you've done other than Bond? Other than Bond was Universal Soldier, which no one ever saw. You played ever. Riker. Hmm? You played Riker in Universal yeah. Soldier? Yeah. That was in uh, the early, early 70s. It was the first film after, yep. and it was um, independently uh, produced. Um, Don Factor, son of Max Factor, put up the money, and uh, I had a free go in it where I could write, rewrite the pages okay. <laughs> on the day. And if there, I didn't like what the director was doing, I'd direct the scene. <laughs> and it was my second movie. So I had a lot of fun on that, but it didn't get out. To, and Jimi Hendrix was going to do the music, and he died on me. Wow, so okay. that would have really made it something. Yeah, De yeah, definitely. So what's the general uh, questions that fans ask you when, when they come up and meet you at these sort of events? Why didn't you do another James Bond? Is that really, you get That's that a lot That's the first there? one, and or what was it like playing James Bond, or how did you get to be James Bond? My dad loves James Bond, or you get the girls. It's always their brother or their dad or someone who likes James Bond. 
Well, you've got to love the, the females walking around outside today. Not really. No? No. I, no. I'm out of the ball game now. Oh, come on. I can't be... I have to go and get a facelift and, <laughs> you know, and work, on, you know, work on jumping around like a teenager again. Uh, well, they're all young. That's what I'm saying. They're all young. Yeah. Oh. Well. And if an old man like me walks up and says, you like to come to dinner tonight? I go, oh, it was all purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we appreciate you taking yeah. the time to chat to all us. Right. Um, we know you've got another interview to do, so mm -hmm. thanks very much for your time. Yeah, all the best. Thanks.